So this is about essay structure. So for every essay, there are four main parts. The introduction, the body, the conclusion, and importantly, the bibliography. So introductions, first of all, which are perhaps the most difficult thing to write. An essay introduction is usually no more than 10% of the total words. So if an essay is, say, between 2,500 and 3,000 words, your introduction may be only one paragraph or perhaps two short ones. Think of the introduction as making promises to the reader, providing the information that he or she needs to understand to understand the rest of your essay. So you may need to do several things in the introduction. You may need to say which option you've chosen if you've been given a range of options from which to choose. You may need to provide some essential brief context or background information as a lead-in to your essay. If an essay topic is very broad, you may choose just to take a slice of that topic, so you need to explain that you're just narrowing down to that particular area. If you do this, do check first with your tutor that that's okay. Importantly, you need to interpret the question a bit in your introduction. It's helpful to point out the implications of the essay question or possibly explain what you need to do in order to tackle it. And also you may need in your introduction to define any specialist terms, or if you're using a word that has a possible range of several meanings, and you're using a particular meaning, it's important to say that at the beginning. Get that over and done with in the introduction. Then, if you haven't already done so when you've been explaining the implications, um, you need to give what's called the roadmap the topics you're going to cover in the order in which you intend to cover them. Write in the present tense, and importantly, before you submit your essay, read these through again, just to make sure that the essay you promised in the introduction is the essay you have actually written. Very important. A few do-nots for introductions. Do not write out the exact words of the question again in the introduction. They know what the question is, they wrote it. They don't need to be told it all over again. Do not begin sentences with, this essay will. An essay is not a little person. It can't argue, discuss, think, or any other things that human beings do. If you prefer to avoid the first person, I discuss, da 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 da, then use the passive, da 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 da, is discussed. And do not focus on a topic which is never mentioned again at all in the rest of the essay. The body of the essay, the bit between the introduction and the conclusion, is written in paragraphs. A paragraph is a solid block of text, so don't keep starting new lines inside your paragraph unless you're inserting a long quotation. That means a quotation that's more than 40 words. Denote a paragraph break by starting on a new line, indenting the new line by five spaces. Then, even if your paragraph starts at the top of a new page, we know you've started a new paragraph. Each body paragraph makes a point in your argument. The first or second sentence of a paragraph is very important because there you state what's going on, what this paragraph's about, how you're answering the question in this paragraph. So this sentence, often called the topic sentence, shows what you're doing in the paragraph. Use the rest of the paragraph to explain your argument, to provide evidence, to explain your ideas. And when you finish doing that, and you've explained that point, start a new paragraph for the next point. So paragraphs in theology essays are quite substantial. A two-sentence paragraph is not going to be happening in a theology essay. If you've got two sentences just sitting there on their own, like little orphans, it's possible they belong in the previous paragraph, or you haven't developed your idea and provided all the explaining that you need to do to show what you're meaning. Unless the lecturer specifically asks for recommends subheadings, I would advise that you do not use them. If you write effective topic sentences, the word or phrase for the subheading should be in that opening sentence, so you shouldn't need them. Also, you will have explained the sequence of your ideas in your introduction, 
so the reader knows what to expect. At the end of the essay, bring together all your ideas in the conclusion. Bring together all your points from the whole essay, not just the final paragraph. And the idea is that it's a big therefore. You've brought all these ideas together and you're showing that you have answered the question. And if you want to repeat some of the words of the essay question or task, now is the time to do it, to hammer home that you have actually done what you've been asked to do. Don't quote anybody in your conclusion. Conclusion should be written in your own words. This is your voice telling the reader your take on what you've been thinking about in response to the essay question. So details from other people come into the body, but small details do not come into the conclusion. And the conclusion reflects the position you've been building up towards and taking throughout the whole essay. It shouldn't be a surprise to the reader. So don't have any direct quotation. Don't include small details in your conclusion. Don't suddenly go for the tangent and talk about something that you've not mentioned before. If a brilliant idea occurs to you when you're writing the conclusion, rush back and write a body paragraph about it, and then you can mention it in the conclusion. And do not end with a platitude or with a rhetorical question. Finally, starting on a new page, your bibliography. At the end of the essay, list in alphabetical order by author, all the sources that you've referenced in the footnotes, and any other things you may have read that have influenced your ideas in this essay.